Interesting. I'm going to log into my hosting account. I'm going to go to my domains, hosted domains, and I'm going to create a subdomain. I'm going to call that subdomain IOP 4XX. And I'm going to put it underneath my domain. Now, what I just said, you don't have to completely shut up, right? Questions are allowed and things like that. I just, I don't want to go get off on a tangent or like, you know, have to stop and try and help people create accounts and things like that right now. Fair enough. So please, holler out, interrupt. You don't, don't put your hand, just right, go. Um, so what I'm doing is creating a subdomain. And when I do that, I click add host. And literally, I actually have uh, an entirely new website. I come out here. If I want to, if I want to go look for it, I can. But I can just go in here and put 4x. That's, and there it is. And I can see it. I can go check it real quick. Looks good. There it is. What I want to do at this point is I want to add an SSL to it, right? Because I want a HTTPS. We are application, web application developers. We do not put apps out that are not secure, period. That's the world we live in. As I've, some of you heard me mention earlier, Google, I still need to go get the date. It might be already, but Google will not index websites that are not secure anymore after a certain date. I think it's April. I'm not sure when. So I've created the subdomain. I'm going to go back up top here. I'm going to go to my domains, SSL certificates. I'm going to find my subdomain. And I see over here to the right, I can click add SSL certificate. I want to double check that I'm recording. Yep. Add SSL certificate. I don't want to buy one, right? Um, but there's a free one here. It's called Let's Encrypt. Um, and that's good enough for what we're doing. It'll encrypt whatever we're putting across the internet. So what we have to do is grab a shared IP address for SSL because these certificates are actually joined to an IP address, right? They're, you can't use it anywhere else. Right, so when we click activate SSL, it'll go out and make the request for the SSL. And part of the request is, what IP address do you want this to? Right, so I can't just move my certificate around willy-nilly or have somebody hijack it or something like that. I'm going to activate the SSL. This could be, the second I activate it, my site could be HTTPS, or it could take an hour, five minutes, a day, because it's a whole process that's going on in the background. And sometimes the process is quick, and sometimes it's, it's not. You can see now I'm SSL status. I have a lock, expiration date. That was the expiration date. 105, so it'll go out and renew it. Um, and then I have my site, of course. I'm going to do a couple other maintenance items inside of here while I'm setting up my host, my website. One of those things, I'm going to go to File Manager. And when the server created that subdomain in the root directory of the web server, the www folder, it created a folder for that subdomain, along with all my other subdomains and domain. And I might find it. And there it is. IOP4XX.RackRealLife.com, right? Yours will be IOP-4XX, whatever your domain is. First thing I want to make sure of 
is that nobody's going to get into my world, right? I, I don't want people coming in. More importantly, I don't want Google indexing my site when I'm developing it. Because after a while, Google's going to be like, you got nothing but trash, man. We'll, we'll be back next year. And, uh, and then I've got to fight the climb even harder than you already have to fight the climb in rankings. And let me remind you the value of being on Google. How many of you, especially when it's, even if you know the website address, but it's a long URL, or you don't know the website address, but you know where you're going, mm -hmm. how many of you just type in a couple keywords or whatever in your thing, hit enter, and usually on Google, it's the first one and you click it and you go. Mm -hmm. How many of you do that? 90% of the world does that. Sometimes. 90% of the world does that. <clears throat> Analytically, through analytics, 90% of the world. They go to Google, or they don't even go to Google, they have Google set as their default search engine, right? Mm. And it's crazy. So really important to be good with Google, right? So let's make sure the spider doesn't get in there. And what we're gonna do is right click on our folder, go down to password protect, add. We're not really worried about security right now, I don't care. And we're putting this out on YouTube, right? So people are going to see our username and password. They're going to be able to get in. That's all right. We have nothing to hide, right? We have nothing. Honestly, if we were doing it for a client, right? They had competitors and whatever. Yes, this is how, right? Sony had to log in this way to their website for 18 months until, right? You know what I mean? Like, but we all use student and rag pass, especially because I have to grade your stuff and I'm not going to chase down passwords and usernames. Mm -hmm. And we add this. At this point, if I go out, to IOP-4XX at RackRealLife.com, I'm prompted with a login box. I put in student, rack pass, sign in, and then save it so I don't have to do that every time I go to check my site. Fair enough. And we're going to finish our server. We're almost done our server setup. There's one more thing we need to do, right? And that is make sure that when people do come to our site, if they come on HTTP and not HTTPS, that they end up on HTTPS. We don't want to allow anybody in our site non-secure. The way we do this, and we can talk about this more uh, again as we roll along and um, whatever. Um, but the way we do this, we could do this several ways. We could do this in our code. We could do this in a, even in our HTML. We could do it in. We could do it in PHP. But the problem is, is then we have to make sure it's done everywhere in our site. And what I'm talking about is putting a redirect in. We're on an Apache web server. An Apache web server has something called an .ht access file. And that .ht access file allows for directives to be sent to the server. Directives meaning when that server loads, it grabs that file and occasionally it reloads this file into its memory so that it knows every time something hits it, right? that these are the settings, these are what's going on, these are things that I must do. And what we want to tell it is, whenever somebody hits us, if they're not on, on port 80, I mean, if they're on port, port 80, we want them to go over 8080. We want them to go to SSL, to HTTPS. And so we're going to use our .ht access file to do that. And I'm going to steal the code from my class earlier. Some of these, some people in here was in, were in this class earlier. Here's the link for those of you who would like to go to it. And there's a million other links I could put out here for you, but this was the first one that looked good. And we'll do a lot of this, right? We'll do a lot of Googling in this, including me. I don't know every method and function like the back of my hand, I've got to go find it, you know, I do. Um, there are times I don't even know the name, but I know I can do it. So I know what to ask Google, and then I see the name and I'm like, oh yeah, there it is. That's what I wanted. Or at least that's what we hope for. This is a good read, by the way. I need to add this to the overview. 
and you're welcome to go, you know, go read this at some point. I promise you this. I started using .ht access file early on in my journey because I realized quickly that there were things that needed to be done in here, especially one of them being a redirect, meaning taking taking lines of code and and when you move a website, you need to tell Google that that website moved. And you need to let Google know that it's all good. And so if you do it with a redirect, you don't lose indexing in your pages. Google will say, oh, okay, this page moved over here, cool. We'll index it that way, you're good, no worries. If you don't do that and you move your site, guess what happens? You just start to drop in Google, just drop rankings. The one that we want is we just basically want to say this one. <clears throat> what this is is rewrite engine on, which is an Apache module, just like PHP is an Apache module, right? We want to give it a condition. We're telling that condition anybody comes in on port 80, which is non secure. We want you to rewrite that address and send them to, we'll put our address in here, right, to HTTPS. There are many different ways we could do this. Honestly, what we're trying to do is get rolling, and as long as it works, we're good. <laughs> so I'm gonna to go to my file manager. We're still working in our server, right? I'm gonna to go to my file manager <coughs> and my 4xx file. Here we can see those are the access files for that pop-up to the right, to the site that makes us log in. That's what that information is. You're more, you, you know, after you do it, peek at them, see what's in there. We're gonna add a new file, and this file name is going to be .htacces, .htaccess. The dot makes it a hidden file, right? We're going to create it. I'm going to highlight and I'm going to use code editor and I'm going to paste, at least I think I am, paste that code in to my site. And like everything we do in here, in this class and the other classes, we are going to put a comment and it's going to say, um, redirects all non secure traffic to HTTPS. Just something simple. So if someone comes along, right, they can see what the hell's going on, they understand what's going on, um, if they don't know, right, this stuff. The next thing we need to do is grab our server, our, our subdomain, right? Copy and paste when you can, you make less errors that way. So I'm just grabbing it right out of my, my browser here. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna come over here. And I'm gonna replace that address. I'm gonna paste that in there. Make sure you get rid of, if you bring a slash over and there wasn't two slashes, don't make sure you get rid of the extra slash. Or an extra dot com. Or an extra dot com, like someone did this afternoon. We're gonna save it. Uh, I don't think I said this particularly this afternoon. I think I did talk about this a little bit. But when you click save, if you're spiritual in any way, Say a prayer because this file can bring your server down too. And if it's a client server, that can suck, right? Um, it, it, it's a dangerous file. Come over here when you're done praying, take a deep breath, refresh. So my SSL hasn't applied yet. I'm jumping the gun a little, but that's okay. What I am going to do is just go HTTP and hopefully at least it redirects. See how it redirected? So I know my HT access file is working. 
right? So again, if you did it right, you should be able to go put your address in, hit enter. It's taking a little longer because, right, the server's struggling with the SSL thing. There's probably information bouncing around between the router and, right, you know, it's, it's as long as it bounces to HTTPS, you should be good. And it bounced to HTTPS. So hence, nobody can come to this site when they can come on HTTP, but they're not going to be able to do anything because they're automatically going to go HTTPS. Fair enough? So we got our site set up now. We got our server set up now. We'll come back and we'll check the, the bake and shake, you know, shake and bake or whatever of the HTTPS and things like that. Is I want to make sure that your local host and so that's a pretty short and sweet one. Uh, again, if you don't have a local host, I'll help you install it over the weekend and explain it to you. I have a local host installed. The majority of people in here do. Again, if you don't, don't sweat it. We'll get it. I'm just a poet today. <laughs> um, so local host, um, we all know or will know that our local host Re, uh, for XAMP, which is what we're using, resides on the C drive. And it has its own directory, its own program directory. Oops. Ooh, what was that? I just double clicked. Let's get away from that. That wasn't good. We'll double click on that. We'll go in, and inside of our, our program itself, our, our, our local server, this is a web server on our machine, um, inside of here, we have what's called HTTP docs. And the HTTP, uh, HTTP, not HTTP, sorry, HT docs. Inside of here is where all of our websites are, are kept on our local machine. If you're a good developer, it's probably right up here in the top of your quick access list. This is that. You just drag it over and set it up there. That way, every time you're going to work on your websites and stuff like that, you just click on that. It takes you right to it. <coughs> um, you can see, right, I IOP 5X is um, responsive class, and so that's our project in, in there. What we're going to do in here is we're going to go ahead, actually, we're not going to create a folder. I'm sorry, shame on me, right? What the hell am I doing? <laughs> we're going to stop there, because basically what we're going to do, that folder, our folder is going to be created from our GitHub. We're going to create our repository and bring it down and let it create that folder. My apologies. Done. <laughs> Why would you let me go that far? I was letting you go far enough that I could whoop you really good. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know my local host is running. I know my directory is there. Honestly, that's all we have to do for local host. Let's go and take care of our repo. We'll go out. I'm going to just look at my repositories real quick. You can see I have my IOP 5XX in there, right? What we're going to do in here is we're going to say new repository. And this one is going to be IOP 4XX. I'm going to be cheap and still copy and paste because that's what I do. <clears throat> and down here in the description, I'm going to put I just put the class name and put repo, why Java and script are separated is beyond me in Canvas, should not be, for the IOP4XX project. I believe those of you with student account can create a private one, um, but I would not waste a private because I think you're limited to how many you can use. Um, so, you have a public. We're going to initialize our repository. 
And when we init I mean, initialize our repository, we read me, my apologies. Under git ignore, let's go ahead and put a uh, git ignore file. What this does, for those who aren't sure, don't know, is it tells git to ignore certain files, right? So we have a public repository up here in the, in the cloud, which means anybody can access it and see it. The last thing we want is our passwords and usernames getting up there, right? And we're gonna have config files and things like that. We don't want those files up there, right? And we just initialized it with WordPress because it creates it and if we ever mix WordPress in, we don't want WordPress up there anyway. Why would we store files that we can go get off the WordPress server, you know, um, where you get WordPress from? Now, thank you, Don. Now we're going to create our repository. At this point, we have our README, which is right showing here. We have our get ignore, which is sitting there. And now we're going to go to our settings. If you need to rename, you can rename it right here. There's all kinds of cool things in here to explore and use. But where we're headed, what we want to do, and what's really nice about this, because we can really leverage this feature, is we want to use GitHub Pages. Everything that we are writing in here, with the exception of, I think, 20 HTML tags, will be JavaScript which means we can process, process that on our machine. GitHub can process it in GitHub pages, meaning there's no back-end technology needed, right? And so what we're going to do is set up our GitHub pages and say master branch, and then save that. If I scroll down, for those of you who aren't familiar, what that does is basically give us kind of like a preview of whatever is up there in GitHub as a live web page. It lets us see things. So if I click on it, I don't think it's ready yet. Oh, that was a quick one. Just lets me see what's in there. So what Don's saying, boy, am I glad you came tonight, Don. Keep me on the ball. If you take this link and copy it, Go back over to the code area here, the code tab on the top, and we can get to our README file here. We want to click on it so we can edit it, which we do that by clicking that pencil over here. And we're just going to poke that link right under there. That way it's always accessible to us. That way we're, we can always see it. It's there. I come down. Now, because we're in a repo, even though we're online, we're in a repo, what we need to do is commit the changes directly to master, meaning save it right to our main pipeline. At this point, we're done with setting up our, our GitHub, right? We're good. So we'll come over here to the code tab again. We'll click on the clone or download. And it gives us this link. So we'll copy it. I'm going to go ahead and open my commander. So right now, what I want to do is I want to go to CD, C colon, <coughs> XAMP, HT, docs. Now I'm in right the root of my that directory that we were looking at right there. We're in the root of this folder. We want to bring down our GitHub repository so we can work on it locally. So we're going to say, hey Git, I want to clone a repository and here's where it is. So I paste that link in there. Git clone repository. If you saw over here, it popped in, folder popped in. IOP4XX. As always, first thing I'm gonna do 
Well, I'm not going to do get status out here. I'm going to switch into my repository. And then I'm going to run a git status. Because I want to make sure that everything came right, came in correctly. And I have a nice clean repository now. At this point, and lucky, lucky for those of you who aren't super familiar with Git, we'll get over this bridge real quick and we'll do most of our Git activities from inside our tool itself with button clicks and stuff. So much more user friendly. Um, at this point, I can close that down. So we're, right, we're getting ready to make a web application, right? And we're web developers. And we know that there's all these different resources and tools and things that we use and links to jQuery, links to this, links to that, this and that, right? But what we want to do is we want to set up our environment that we're not dependent on anything external. That we can develop here or in the Rocky Mountains without internet. That we have everything we need and it's all right there. We don't have to go chasing things. We don't have to go finding things, everything we need. What a cool thing is, is there's this, this place out there consortium, if you will. If you search for HTML5 templates, um, you're going to get a lot of craziness. So be careful. What you want to search for, HTML5 framework, hit enter, and one of your tops should be HTML5 rocks boilerplate right here. HTML5 boilerplate. What the boilerplate is, it's a GitHub repository that developers, a group of developers, very good developers, analyze people making, who have forked it, right, and are saying, hey, you should add this, hey, you should add that, hey, you should add this. And what their job is, these developers, this panel, these people who are controlling this, is like, no, 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 yes. No, 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 yes. Right? Because we don't want this all junked up more than it has to be. But what we want is the latest and greatest of tools to start our application with so we don't have to go keep finding them while we're developing. Does that make sense? And we'll talk about a lot of these tools as we go. And you're welcome to read this site, um, explore this site. You know, it's a good a site to explore. But most importantly, why, um, why this framework, why I choose this framework, is that it, 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 it pulls in things that are necessary for us to truly use HTML5. And what I mean by truly use HTML5, as I mentioned earlier, if I want to create an element in the DOM, right, like a div, we have a div, we have an image, we have right, all these different things that we can use in HTML. One of the beauties of HTML5 I can create my own. But they have to be registered with the browser. Well, the compliance of browsers with that new functionality is just all over the place. And so there's scripting that has been writ written that just forces any browser to accept what I'm giving it, right, to, to make it happen. And so basically what it does is it patches the browser's shortcomings, right? And, and so it's really cool. And we'll learn about that as we go. Um, for the most part, you know, we're using uh, vanilla JavaScript, which is really cool because we will see a lot of those instances um, where jQuery might have patched it up for us. But here we're actually going to see, like, oh, shit, wow. Okay, that blew up in IE, but when I link this other file to the helper file, IE just takes it and goes with it, which is cool, which is really cool. So we're going to go ahead and download that. <coughs> and honestly, the download is from a repository. We're going to go look at it in a folder. I already have one out there. You're going to extract it. I copy the name of the folder because I'm going to use it later when I do a commit in my re repository. I'm going to open the folder and then I'm going to stop there. Well, one thing you can do. See how there's a .htaccess file inside that folder? 
rename it BP5 dash HT access. We don't want to overwrite the one on our server, but eventually we're going to want to tap into this puppy and use some of the things because unlike our HT access file with three lines, this bad boy has all kinds of things. Yes, Jimmy. What are you extract? Where are you extracting this folder into? The IOP four X. No, no, we don't want to do that yet, right? We just okay. just open it up so that you can see it. Don't Is extract it, it somewhere. Yeah, just extract it into downloads wherever you brought it down. Fair enough. Yeah. Cool. The beautiful part about this folder is it, it looks overwhelming and confusing to some of us right now, but in the end, what's really cool about it is that we'll be able to use a lot of these things. And I don't think I mentioned this earlier, and I want to point this out. This doc folder has information about every item in here. Every item in here, which is nice, right? And that's part of why they, they control this framework. They're like, you know, no, if we can't document it, if we can't make it meaningful, useful, right, and, and validate it and all these things, then it doesn't go in until we can. So. So we renamed that HT access, correct? We have that ready to use. I'm going to go ahead and open up Adam. What I need to do, I'm not going to waste time closing all this stuff. I need to go and f open up that folder. So file, open folder. And there's my IOP for it. You can see because we pulled the repository down, right? And I have hidden file show hidden files on my system. You can see there's that repository that we pulled down from GitHub. I'm going to open this folder and close all this junk out. Maximize my window and make sure that I have my GitHub right that I can see what's going on with my GitHub. Before we add anything else to this folder, anything at all to this folder, you're going to see these are all the different files already, right, that, that were put in because of the WordPress that we put in there. By the way, that star is saying any file named .log. That's what that's stating. So any file with the with the uh, extension .log on it will not will be it'll be ignored. I'm just going to come down here to the bottom and I'm going to paste those Dreamweaver ones in there. And then because I am an Atom, before I create my FTP connection, I know that it's going to create dot .ftp Ignore, is that an E on the end? FTP I Correct. I G N O R E and then FTP config, right? Dot FTP config. And those are for Atom, for a plugin in Atom, right? So I can just go and put in here. Always, always, always comment and put notes for yourself. Do not be surprised how many times you'll come back six months later and think, what the hell was I doing? What was I thinking? You know, like, I'm going to save it. Oh, that's so much easier. And we're going to see it pop right. up over yeah. here. <laughs> right? So oh, now it's nice. sitting over there. Uh -oh. I didn't do it. I'm going to go ahead uh, right now, and I'm going to stage this. I'm going to click staging, which is the same as typing what? Add dot, get add get dot. Add dot or get add store. See, now they're staged, they're ready to go. I'm going to put in here updated 
ignore file and we're going to commit it. I'm going to close it. Are we going to push it? I was thinking about it, but um, sure, why not? So what's cool, right, for those, uh, right, you, you heard get status, get status all morning. That's get status, right? It's a glance. It's beautiful. Down here I have this push button. What push means? For those of you who don't know, what push means is that I'm going to push it up here to GitHub. So my changes are up there in that repository. So you'll see this actually change. Still pushing. Brian. Should be done. It, we wanted to do that because once we go off to the branch, then we wouldn't have the map to the way we wanted to be, correct? What? We wanted to push it so that it would be on the permanent copy well, of the master before we went to a branch. It's already on the permanent. We committed it to the permanent copy, right? So we could have waited because oh. sometimes you'll see, depending what tool you're using, it'll say behind, behind head by three. And what it's trying to tell you is your three commits behind what's up on GitHub. So you might want to push. Okay. Do, do you follow what I'm saying? But that was good thinking, right? And that's, yeah, you're thinking right. And when you're not sure, and what's beautiful is we know that our git ignore file worked, why? How do we know our git ignore file worked? There's nothing else went up. Besides. Right, we don't see FTP, dot FTP config, we don't see dot, right? Groovy. Now we're ready to, to get bacon with bacon. What we're going to do in here, and uh, Adam, I can do this here. In Dreamweaver, we did it, uh, some of us did it earlier today, but in Adam, I do it down here. I click on master because that's showing me my branch, and I click new branch. It gives me an empty box to fill in, and I'm going to call the branch adding dash Framework. I'm going to say new branch. As a refresher, what this means to us is now any changes I make here, right? I've created a branch, which means I'm no longer working on on the the master branch. I'm no longer messing with production code. I'm now working up here, and therefore everything I do does not touch this code, mess with it, or anything like that until I choose to bring it in and merge it. Fair enough. I can see, right, in different tools, you want to train your eyes to look somewhere every once in a while and check. In Adam, it's kind of funny. To me, it's kind of like flying. When you fly a plane, right, you have a pattern that your eyes take. Instruments, 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 sky, 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 instruments, instruments, instruments. Oh shit, there's a plane. Right, coming at me right now, but <laughs> like you train yourself this this pattern of, of visualization in your editor too, and so you're watching an atom. You're always watching down here. What branch am I in? You're always watching over here for what's my status, right? Am I clean? Did something change? Did right? We're all good. I don't know if Adam's gonna let me drop it in. My files in. Will it? I'm going to go out here and take all of these files. I'm going to grab them. Do I have to drop them in the folder or just drop them in there? Uh, I'm going to drop them up here I, on the root. Yeah, that's what I did. Ooh, it, it moved them. It did not take my git ignore, which is great because it would have overwritten it. And as we established earlier, actually in the earlier class, the git ignore that comes with HTML5 boilerplate has nothing in it anyway, but links to git. So we're good. I'm gonna close this, and now we can see, right, all these files were added. 
And the nice thing is uh, when we're not in Commander, we actually can come in and see the changes in these files as well. And in these files, there's really no changes because they're all added files. The first thing I want to do before I do any commits or anything like that, I want to go out to my local host. And what am I checking for? Anybody? Why do I want to go to a local host right now? Because I just drum, dropped a bunch of strange files into my root. I need to see if anything's wrong with them. Just because it came from a viable source doesn't mean they can't be corrupted. Doesn't mean that there couldn't be a configuration in there that I need to be concerned about or something. And so I just want to go do a brief test. And so I'll inspect. I'll open my console. I'll refresh cache. And I look good. Everything looks good there. And here's the deal with the project. You, the thing as far as project homework goes, I get the video up in this spot to replace the one that's there. And the expectations there, whatever we get done this week is your project work that's due for the next week. Fair enough? So, meaning, right, so like, I will extend the project date. I think I need to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, the way that I want the class to go. So you gotta, you gotta be fluid with me a little bit, I'm trying to figure, right? But it's kind of unfair for me to get the project video up and say, get it done by Sunday on Thursday night. Uh, I know the majority of you have other responsibilities and stuff. So maybe what we'll do is we'll make the project due dates Thursdays. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah, I agree. Great. And let's see how it works. Because I don't want you to dive into the old project. I am bringing the old stuff from the old project over, but I want to bring it over in reasonable bites and chunks that it, it's a little overwhelming the way I have it right now. You spend more time doing and less time learning. I want learning, right? If I can get you, if I can get you going on a hot mess, you know, like if I can get you chugging and get you manipulating the DOM and you know, le uh, leveraging APIs, you know, a couple nice bite things and stuff like that on JavaScript, you're positioned to run. Do you know, what, does that make sense? Like you're positioned to really run with it, run with it. And what I really want to cover is, the, you know, basics, but you're going to do that in homework, most of the basics. We're going to apply the basics, and what I really want to make sure I cover this semester with this class are like, what are those things that took me a year and a half to learn because I didn't have somebody to talk to that I feel I could have learned pretty damn quick if I had a resource to right go back and forth with about it. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have this. Local host looks good. I feel good. One would think that what we do now is go Merge it to master, push it up to the production site. Is that what we do? What do we do? Should never forget. What do we do? Remember? What? Staging and committing. And then are we, what else do we do? Do you remember? Go ahead. You just let it sit there for a little bit. Let We're going to process. Right. We're going to push our branch up to mm -hmm. GitHub. We're going to push our branch up to production. But what we're not going to do is merge it into master. We want to let it bake for a couple of days. We want to let it sit for a little bit. You know, even not a couple of days, but definitely a few hours. Let that server do its cycle once or twice and see if it picks up some funky configuration, because we just dumped a whole bunch of files up there. So let's just slow our roll, because sometimes that way, that's what you need to do, right? So we'll slow our roll, and we'll, we'll um, so what we do do, Monica was correct, I'm gonna stage all my changes over here. 
I'm going to put in here added framework. I'm going to paste. I think I still have it. I don't. I like to do this. You can type it in. I'm lazy. I want the version number of the framework, and I want the framework that I'm using. So I just come out here and grab it off of the folder that I downloaded. HTML5 boilerplate version 6.1.0. This point. I'm going to commit that. Before I do my push, there's one last thing I want to do. And I'm going to be cheap about it, and I'll share it with you, and you can be cheap about it, okay? I just want to kind of create some consistency, and I need to capture, like with my videos, I need to capture notes on what, I, what I'm doing so that it's just better. And the nice thing is, is these first couple classes, right? Not couple, but this first class and others are very similar in activities, so what we can do is just put in there, preparing project for development, added HTML5 boilerplate version 6.10 files to application. <coughs> I'm going to save that. I put that in my readme file. Our readme file, we're going to learn about also, we are going to use this in here, you'll see we actually have what's called a manifest in here, site um, web manifest. We're going to learn how to use this. But for um, we're also going to keep our README file updated because our README file is what lets other developers know what we're doing in the site and things like that. I'm going to close that. Oh, look, status. Um, <laughs> I must say get status in Web 115 about, like, what, 80 times today? At least. That's why you're so tired of that. I know, man. Um, I'm going to stage it. I'm just going to put, right, updated. Readme file. And I'm going to commit that. So now as Don and I were talking about earlier, I did two commits without pushing. So I'm two, two behind the head. And now if I push, I'm good. Pushing them up. Oh crap, nothing's there. Why? Wrong branch. Wrong branch. Oh, there it is. Adding framework branch. There's all my files. Because I didn't bring them into master yet, right? So the next thing that I'm going to do is it's 720 for anybody who wants to leave, but I want to finish our objective tonight. So Next thing that we need to do is I need to go to Packages, <coughs> Remote FTP, Toggle, there. And what I need to do is create, right, um, connect it to my website. One of the things we didn't do while we were out there and Don failed to remind us of, <laughs> remind us of everything else, <laughs> Sorry. is we need to go to Files, FTP Accounts, We like when this happens, by the way. Because when this happens is when we go to the bathroom and some sneaky person comes up and we've left our whole web server wide open for the world. We want our web server to say, nope, sorry, you need to log in again. I'm going to go to Files, File Manager, FTP Accounts. I'm going to create a new FTP account. I'm going to use the name Student and RackPass, and I ask you to as well. 
that subdomain that I created. I'll grab that, right? And I'll add that account. There's the FTP account that I created. If I grab the whole FTP username and copy it, all I have to do is remember the password and I have everything I need to do to set up FTP in my, my tools, right? I'm gonna come out. I'm just gonna do it the way I know best and go into packages and say, I think I create an ignore file first, right? Yes, because it captures all the things in there. And we'll add to that later. But we just, we want it to ignore certain things and not push them up to the server. So the other ignore is forget, right? Saying don't put these things in our repo. This ignore is for our FTP saying don't put these things up on our server. Does that make sense? If we were in Dreamweaver, we would cloak them. Right click on them and cloak them. Be happy to go over that with you. Now I'm going to create FTP config file. Because I have my username, my FTP username copied on clipboard, I can just use it over and over and over again. All I have to do is get rid of the, the prepended student there because what they want is the host, not the name. I can put the name in here like that. That's the full name. And then I can put rack pass, and that's our password. And click save, close it, and connect. And lucky me, it worked. That's what's out there on my server. This is what's here on my local host. I will now, it's been a while since I used this one, sync local to remote. And what should be happening is these files should be going up to the server. So it should be happening. We'll see. So all of those files are going up to the database? Yep. They, sh they should be, I hope they are. We'll find out in a minute. Yep. See, they're all. So at this point, I should be able to come out and refresh this. And there we go. This is when you say, I'm done for a while. And kind of let it sit. And some of you are like, thank God. <laughs> Questions? Well, will this video be up? 